game ended up quickly. And uh, I just realized that I, I'm not just missed a spot. I was disappointed by the results and also by uh, the quality of my chess. I could feel I, uh, I could do more. I just didn't know that uh, second round was quite bloody for the leaders. Yusuf lost a couple of games. Lanka for a moment was ahead. You are listening to KasparovChess.com podcast, episode 13. In 1977, Peter decided to add World Cadets Championship to its official calendar. If you remember a year earlier, in summer 1976, I took part in the unofficial World Cadet Championship in France. And I guess the event was considered to be a success. And uh, FIDE started its uh, process of uh, adding new age categories to the official uh, world titles. This novelty created a small problem for Soviet chess authorities. How to organize qualification events. There were five players who could compete for uh, a spot in under 20 World Championship. And three younger players, myself included, Yusupov and Lanka, who could play in both. Technically, they could separate the events, but the man in charge of Soviet Junior Chess, Anatoly Bukovsky, wisely decided that it would not be worth dividing players into groups because he knew all three of us, three younger players, could compete against all the peers. And he was right. Indeed, three younger players changing place in turn led throughout the whole tournament. I was, of course, the youngest player in the tournament, but also I was the only one who has not become a master yet. I was just a candidate master, though two times junior champion of the USSR under 18. And fresh of my uh, triumph in Riga, I considered myself as uh, one of the top contenders for the most coveted prize, a spot in the under-20 World Championship. But also I remember that uh, there were two other targets in this tournament. One is to qualify if I missed the big event for the um, under-17 World Championship. Though I have to admit, I didn't consider Yusupov and uh, Lanka real competitors. Again, maybe it was after Riga, where I beat the whole field and uh, was under the impression that uh, those two should not uh, be real challenges to me. And of course, I uh, remembered that plus two would give me a master title. Something that I thought would be almost automatic, but I still had to qualify to make a norm. As it often, if not always, happens, being overconfident and not evaluating correctly your strengths versus the strengths and experience of your opponents didn't work well. Double round, eight players tournament required uh, not just great chess talent and good preparation, but also stamina and a character. 
something that I yet had to acquire. This event held in Leningrad in April 1977 also marked uh, the beginning of my rivalry with Dvoretsky students, Arthur Yusupov and uh, Sergei Dolmatov. And it took four years for me to establish my dominance as the best Soviet junior. I started this tournament with an uneventful draw against Arthur Yusupov. I played white, and it's really discouraging because we played uh, Petrov defense. That was Yusupov's favorite choice at the time, influenced by Mark Voretsky. And uh, with Nikitin and Shakarov, we spent endless hours analyzing the modern lines in uh, Petrov defense trying to find uh, new ideas for white gain initiative. At that time, I didn't know that I uh, would be working on these lines for next uh, 25 years, trying again and again to um, get new ideas for white to gain an initiative playing against Karpov, Anand, Kramnik, and many other players. But uh, round one draw didn't make me happy, and I didn't know that's uh, the beginning of uh, quite an ordeal that would end up with a great disaster in the last round. In round two, I played uh, against Haritonov, very solid positional player, by the way, another student of uh, Botvinnik school. I played uh, the opening uh, with black creatively, but missed my chances. And when the game was about to end uh, as a draw, I blundered the piece and lost the game. So uh, in round three, where I faced uh, Leonid Zayt, probably the most experienced player in this field. He was the under-18 champion of the USSR in 1974, and I remember the very painful loss against him in the first round of um, all Soviet junior games in uh, 1973 in Vilnius, where uh, he effortlessly crushed me in, uh, in King's India. Winning the game was a must if I wanted to improve my tournament standing, but more importantly, to regain my confidence that I could compete against uh, the field of the very experienced and all the players. But undoubtedly, Zayt also looked at this game as his chance to crush me, eliminate me from uh, the field of competitors, and to, of course, improve his own chances to qualify since he was already 19, and that was his uh, last opportunity to advance to the international arena. I knew that I would go for uh, one of the sharpest lines in either so-called poison pawn variation, and uh, I was, as I thought, well prepared, Sacrifice pawn on b2, played knight b3, the most popular line at the time, followed uh, famous uh, uh, victory of Boris Paskey in uh, game 11 of his match against Bobby Fischer in 1972. But uh, it was Zayd who actually uh, made a surprising move. At move 11, instead of uh, popular knight c6, first h5, and then knight c6, he played knight d7. And um, eventually I recognized that that was a very good idea, uh, though knight seems to be more passive on d7 than on c6, but it also protects b6 square, and that prepares an escape for black's queen, because often after queen b4, when black queen goes on before queen e3, 
white goes with queen on e3, black queen is, is in potential trouble. It's, uh, it, needs, it, needs a, it needs a route to escape, and knight d7 prepares it. Uh, so I was um, not yet impressed in 1977, but many years later, more than 16 years later, when I played uh, Nigel Short in the World Championship match, I chose knight c6 in our first game with bishop g5 and, uh, and the poisoned pawn variation. But then and during the match, I already decided to switch to knight d7, and later I, I played against, against Nigel in, uh, in a tournament game in Novgorod. So I don't think I did well in, in, in this, my opening against uh, Leonid Zeit. I made a very strange move. 13, queen d4, threatening knight b1 to, to win the queen, but um, it didn't work out. And uh, very quickly, so white was left in, in, in quite awkward position, pawn down and uh, dubious compensation. But um, I was still encouraged. I saw Zayt's king in the center, and though um, objectively my position was not good, and uh, every computer will prove that uh, move um, 24, black could uh, have a significant advantage if he took on c4, changed knights, and then played queen d6. But um, I could feel that Leonid was not very comfortable because uh, my king was so far protected on h1 and his king was on e8. And my second pawn sacrifice opened the position. And the moment he made uh, this mistake, queen c7, move 24, I immediately played knight bd2. And you could see how white pieces got the perfect coordination. So knight on c4 is now protected. Bishop from e2 attacks h5, pawn. Rook from a3 is playing on the, on the third rank, but also attacks pawn on a6. Queen from a1 potentially attacking f6. So white pieces just are extremely well, well developed. And um, even being two pawns down didn't uh, make much of a difference. I wouldn't go into details of this game. It was a very exciting game. Um, I uh, missed the win a couple of times. Uh, Zeit uh, tried to defend his position quite creatively. Big exchange of uh, tactical shots uh, in, in a terrible time trouble. Eventually I missed the win, but uh, Zeit having seconds left on his clock missed uh, the almost study-like escape. So I won the game, and uh, that was definitely a big victory. It's not just helped me to bring back my confidence, but I think it badly damaged my opponent, who hasn't recovered. Though he still played a few good games in the tournament, he beat, by the way, me in the, uh, in the second uh, round, and in the last round, he beat with black pieces, he beat uh, Zygrud Slanka and denied him a qualification spot. But more about it later. In round four was another uneventful draw with uh, Sergei Dolmatov. Uh, was not Petrov, but uh, Sveshnikov. Uh, another big challenge for me throughout the rest of my uh, professional career. <laughs> Though at the end, I already played this line quite successfully with uh, Black. But after this uh, draw, Dalmatov um, fell ill and uh, left the tournament. And thus, the playing field was reduced to seven participants. And uh, my draw against Dalmatov was no longer counted. I did well at the end of the first round. I pressed hard against uh, Lanka. The game was played on my birthday, but I failed to uh, give myself the best birthday present. I was close, but it ended up as a draw. Fairly quick draw against my Garamov. Uh, I couldn't do anything against his favorite Skivenningen. Again, more about my games with uh, Elmar, a good friend and rival from Baku in, in the later uh, segments. And uh, in round seven, I... Uh, took a revenge for uh, my uh, 
loss in the last round of um, Junior Championship in 1975 against uh, Alexei Yermolinsk. Good, uneven game, but um, during the adjournment, I, um, I managed to place my pieces in ideal positions. And though I was exchanged down, but everything was quite protected. Uh, and um, he, uh, his two rooks couldn't, uh, couldn't create any real counterplay. So plus one after the first round, but Yusupov was way ahead, was plus three. But the second round was quite bloody for the leaders. Yusupov lost a couple of games. Lanka, for a moment, was ahead. But then I managed to beat Lanka and uh, got plus two. And that's uh, how we reached the last round. Yusupov and myself, we had plus two. Lanka was behind plus one. And uh, I believe that I was on the verge of another major success. Because Yusupov had to play black against Karitonov. And I uh, thought that the draw would be best Artur can achieve. And I had white against Yermolinsky, who was dead last in this field. We knew that Yermolinsky almost regularly played his line in, uh, in Rouser, quite modern at the time. And uh, we did some preparation. And somehow I, uh, I was convinced that it's, the game would be a mere formality. Instead of even driving to the, to, to the Torben Hall, so we walked. It was quite a long walk, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes. That was another stupid thing uh, because it just took too much energy and I guess I was overexcited. And uh, when we reached this position, so I played e5 in the center, then played bishop e4 at move 15. Um, and um, Hermonski played queen c5. And after rook h1, he made his move rook a7. Not actually the best move, probably rook c8 is stronger, but somehow I just got totally confused. I, uh, I wasn't sure what, what to do, and, uh, I, um, and I saw that the white has an interesting idea before. If you remember my game against Yurbalinski in uh, 1975, so I missed g4, g, attacking one bishop and then g5, winning another bishop. This move before is not as obvious. It's just you push a pawn you know, from your uh, king's uh, position and uh, it's not normally recommended, but it had uh, solid positional uh, justification. After queen b6, you can, white can go queen d6 or even queen f4 and then rook d6 and white has solid initiative with queens or without queens aboard. And I doubt very much that I would be in any risk of losing the game. And so the chess history could uh, be quite different. But I lost control of the game and I uh, found myself just you know, in, in a very uncomfortable situation, then lost the pawn. Uh, but Hermolinsky didn't play well and uh, eventually I recovered the pawn and I almost equalized. But then with a few moves to go before time control, I made another terrible mistake. And uh, my king uh, was nearly mated, and I had to give up my rook to to escape from this mating net. But uh, of course, the the game ended up quickly, and uh, I just realized that I I've not just missed a spot in the world under twenty, but I also failed to make my master norm, which was plus two. And I was about to miss even the second qualification spot. But as you remember, Lanka lost to Zeit. And that uh, saved uh, some honor for me because I uh, managed uh, to uh, stay on the second place. It was quite ironic that Zeit helped me second time because in 1976 in Belize, where he also played, uh, but played quite poorly, 
in the junior under 18. His uh, game against Europa as my Parashvili, that he lost, eventually helped me to win uh, the title on tie breaks because Tura played uh, with Zeit and this loss denied Tura precious half a point in his bogles that could give him gold medal. So Arthur Yusupov won the tournament because he made uh, quite a solid positional draw in the last round against Haritonov and um, earned his rights to represent Soviet Union in the world under 20. And I uh, had to settle for the second spot uh, and um, in this coming summer, I had to go back to France to play uh, the World Cadet World Championship uh, and to try to win this title, the one that I, unofficial title, that I failed to win a year earlier. I was disappointed by the results and also by uh, the quality of my chess. I could feel I, uh, I could do more. I just didn't know that uh, the rest of the year would be even harder and there'll be more disappointments and uh, it will make me to reevaluate many things, both in my preparation and in uh, my games.